I started singing when I was about six years old. And my grandfather, who was a coal miner in southern Indiana, his uh, hobby was playing steel guitar and, and Spanish guitar. He was self-taught. And he bought an old wire recorder, old at the time, of course, it was new, a wire recorder. And this was pre-tape recorders. And so he would record whatever instrument he was playing. And then with a wire recorder, you could record over that same wire, and it wasn't going to erase what you'd already done. And of course, he elected me to be the singer on his, some of his recordings. So uh, every summer when I'd go visit him, you know, I'd have to set aside two days to record with my grandfather. So that was my first experience in recording and uh, had no idea that later on I'd end up doing that professionally. This is what I used to record on, and this is wire. And these wire spools used to be on wire recorders, and they were magnetic. It was pre-tape recorders. And you'd record on this, and if it happened to break, you'd just tighten a knot, and it'd still be OK. And the other thing that was unique about it, uh, unlike tape and other things, you could record on it. You could put it back at the beginning again and record on it again, but what you've already recorded is not going to be erased. It's still on there. So you could just keep adding and adding and adding. The only problem was you could not make a mistake. Because <laughs> if you made the mistake, it's not going to go away either. So eventually what happened is you'd take the wire recorder, and when they came out with tape recorders, you'd record on your wire recorder. And then if you wanted to play along with it, you'd record that onto the tape along with singing or some other instrument you'd want to add to it. After you got that, you could go back to the wire recorder. So it was a back and forth. And the people who did that initially, I think, that made it famous was Les Paul and Mary Ford. Once you got your recording, they had a machine that was a record-making machine. And you'd have these blank discs, and you'd put it on this thing that looked just like a record player, except what it did is it cut grooves in the plastic or in the acetate or whatever this is made out of, some kind of plastic stuff. And then when you put the, a real record player on it, it would follow those grooves and you'd have a record. So that was my first experiences with recording. And of course, when I first started out as an engineer and an artist, it was monaural. There weren't multi-tracks. And of course, there weren't things like today where you've got digital recordings. And so even when I was at Fame, we recorded from one tape recorder to the other tape recorder when we did the harmonies on Where's My Little Girl, which was our, our first record at Fame. And so whenever they came along with the four-track machine, and then eventually the eight-track machine, and the 16, and the 24, and then two 24s in tandem, it was like, oh, we have control of everything. We can do everything on separate tracks and fix it. And supposedly that's going to save you time, right? No. <laughs> what happened is we had even computerized memorizing the things we did on the board. So it got to where we'd take so long sometimes you know, doing all that because we could that you'd almost forget what it sounded like and what it was supposed to sound like. So you'd have to get away from it for a while and come back again. So some, sometimes the, the better technology takes away the, like Rick Hall, when he first started, you got the record and he'd fade it, you know, and you got it till you got it right. And so that shows you what a master mixer and producer he was. He was doing it monaural. 